Plastic is pervasive, especially the single-use kind. It's useful for carrying groceries and storing food, it's durable, and lightweight for shipping. But over the decades, its convenience has created a plastics problem. Every year, Canadians throw away over 3 million tons of plastic waste. Only a fraction of that gets recycled, a whopping 9%. 29,000 tons of plastic end up in our natural environment, including lakes and oceans, while the rest end up here, in landfills. Take, make, waste. That's what we're doing today in Canada, and it's what's called a linear recycling economy. We take petrochemicals out of the ground, and we turn it into plastic. We put it into packages, we put it on our shelves, we bring it to our houses, we put it in the bin, goes to a recycling depot, and then it ends up in landfill for the most part. There are several reasons why Canada's recycling rates are so low. For one, what's allowed in blue bins differs from province to province and city to city. And it's often cheaper for manufacturers to buy virgin or new plastics instead of recycled plastics because of the price of fossil fuels. But one of the biggest offenders is consumer behavior. A lot of the times, plastics that can be recycled are simply thrown into the garbage. Not only is there an environmental impact with all these plastics being discarded, but there's a big economic loss as well, to the tune of $9 billion. There has been a call from environmentalists and consumers to eradicate plastics, but we're far from that. What is being done now is a push to what's called a circular economy. The circular economy is about ensuring the carbon within plastic does not end up in our environment, does not go to waste, but continues to be reused in some fashion. The concept is simple and is like the old slogan, reduce, reuse, recycle. But keeping the resources in circulation relies on more than a slogan. Experts say it requires regulations and innovation. The Canadian government has a regulation in works. In an effort to achieve zero plastic waste by 2030, it's banning six single-use plastics by the end of 2021. The ban includes plastic grocery bags, straws, stir sticks, plastic cutlery, six-pack rings, and food containers made from hard-to-recycle plastics, like black plastic. We really need to be doing everything we can to be reducing our unnecessary plastic use, um, and that should mean banning more than just these, sing these six single-use items, which are really low-hanging fruit. According to a survey by environmental organization Oceana Canada, two-thirds of Canadians believe the ban should be expanded. We think that the list is too narrow. Um, if you think about those items, things like straws, checkout bags, um, a lot of them are items that are already falling out of favor. Ontario is in the process of moving away from blue box programs and putting the responsibility of collecting and managing plastics onto the producers. But that transition isn't expected to be completed until 2025. Another policy potential? Setting a minimum percentage of recycled content in new plastic products. In 1991, our neighbors to the south in the state of California passed a law that mandates manufacturers use 25% post-consumer content in some of its packaging. Now that packaging producer needs to go and say, okay, I need to get recycled plastic to put into this product. So I need to make sure there's a good supply that's high quality, that's reliable, and that's at a price that uh, really can compete in this price-sensitive market. Another way to achieve a circular economy is to rethink the way we design plastic. Oftentimes when you buy a, a plastic packaging, you'll see a lot of airspace between the top of what's put in the package and the, and the package. This is called headspace. That plastic packaging between that, that really is holding nothing but air is unnecessary plastic. And so that would be a good example of where uh, there's a, a role for elimination. Industry experts say innovation needs to be at the forefront of reducing our plastic consumption. We're prioritizing feedstocks or plastic materials that are currently economically challenging to recycle uh, through the mechanical process. Green Mantra Technologies in Brantford, Ontario is among more than 200 facilities in Canada processing and recycling plastics. Unlike mechanical recycling where discarded plastics are collected, washed and crushed up into tiny pieces, Green Mantra uses chemistry to break down discarded plastics at a molecular level. This facility goes through tens of millions of pounds of plastic every year. The end product, a synthetic wax in the form of tiny black pellets. So they can go back into the manufacturing of plastic products, 
but they can also go into brand new markets where traditional recycled plastic couldn't be used. So some examples would be in the manufacturing of roofing shingles, where we can help make a stronger shingle, or into the manufacturing of um, asphalt paved roads, where we make a road that lasts longer or is more durable. Industry experts say that reaching the federal government's goal by 2030 is a lofty one and will involve an all-hands-on-deck approach. They say policies can ban items and help create incentives, but collaboration and innovation from within the industry is what will help get us to zero plastic waste and ultimately a circular economy. And that can happen all across Canada. It can happen in the chemical industries. It can happen in small municipalities that are investing in uh, sorting and collecting and recycling technology. It can happen uh, uh, in our companies and retailers that are looking at uh, bringing in reuse or refill models. It's really a, a broad uh, set of uh, involvement from a lot of companies that can, that can drive this change. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.